recording. Okay, let's call the meeting to order, 703. And we're both recording this so everybody knows that. Uh, any public comments? The only one public. What, what you, it was uh, no, no public comments on non-agenda items. Okay. Moving right along, item three. Uh, oh, let me say this. Um, Cindy Wu won't be here, but she wants me to call her when we start talking about things and try and have uh, some input, especially for her business part. Um, I don't know how that will work, but it's always better when people are here in person. I but it, we can you know, put her on we try it and we see how it do. goes. Uh, it doesn't hurt anything. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Maybe I should start calling it now. Yeah. You got enough batteries there? Yeah, I hope so. I have more good stories to tell after. <laughs> okay, so let me give Cindy a call right now so she'll be on speaker phone. Uh, she had some stuff for me to uh, uh, give you guys, but I didn't get her by email, so she'll have to resend it concerning the business form that we're planning. Business form? Yeah. <coughs> in a couple months. When she's been talking. Trying to organize the businesses in the area, I think, oh, from what okay. I could read. Let's try phoning her. We could do this. With the decals and stuff? I don't know. We could do the same uh, thing. The decals are not, no. The, all come together like Granada Hills High School. We can do the it's same thing with the religious in the area. Yeah, we can do it with everything. That's what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> hey, uh, is this Cindy? Hi, it is. Oh, it's Jim Summers. I'm going to put you on speakerphone, okay? Okay. All right. Hi, Cindy. Hi there. Happy New Hello. Year. There you go. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Tell her who's present. Uh, right now, we are just started the meeting. It's Renee is here, Mike Benedito is here, and William Kuzman is here, and myself, Jim. OK, great. I'll just uh, mute myself. Okay, very good. Pop in when you have anything to say that you think is okay. important. Okay, sounds all right. good. We're also... Uh, Sorry, I have to be there physically with you all. But well, I'm with you guys in spirit. Okay. okay. Well, on the phone is good. Yeah. Okay, uh, and we're videotaping this also. Okay, uh, I want to give a quick uh, report on the metrics. The numbers are pretty good for Granada Hills South. We haven't done a survey, so Granada Hills North, comparatively, is running a little bit more than ours. Uh, we have about 550, which really isn't a whole lot, but it's been improving from about 300. Okay, we just started off low. Um, and that, that's, we're going to be using different types of measurements to see how many people there are. That's probably our basic one right now, and that's what Dunn looks at. Um, Let's see, anybody else have anybody, anything else to say on measuring or things are going? Aren't we going to have to do something with that to satisfy done? Well, also to satisfy us. It's good to see how many people come and how many people we have at different events and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and also to see how our outreach works. Some events may not be doing too well, you know, and, and we have to consider if we really want to do them, traditional events that we've been doing for years as far as how many people we get. Other events are really, really good for the amount. So I think we should focus in on um, the ones the, the that, one that everybody work. participates in. What, what do you have in mind as far as the ones that may not be working, do you think? Um, Citrus Sunday is always hard because it's at the wrong time of the year. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a very hard one. Uh, in order to, and by mean what I mean is working it's like getting new people Effective. to participate and yeah. join the council that's that's the hardest one I'm going to talk with Jonathan they're going to have a meeting later this month and we're going to see if we can move it to like August or something where they have oranges 
because right now it's just lemons. Isn't that a citywide thing though? I don't. Th I think it's just CD twelve. I think it's just CD twelve. Just CD twelve. Uh huh. Anything else? What were I your can, thoughts I can, on that? I can talk about the the two things I thought were two of the best outreaches. Okay, good. What were uh, that would be the um, movie night. Yeah. And the um, Halloween support for the Parks and Rec. Exactly. You know, the it's movie night fair. got about 500 people in the parks and rec. Well, over 700. Been, over 700. We count. Yeah, well, I'm being conservative. Okay. I was there. I did a, I did a mental count. <laughs> okay. I'm just being conservative. <laughs> what did you think wasn't working? Um, I, I... The parade. How, how do you think the parade went? Well, we don't get we hardly ever get signatures because nobody's doing it. It's mostly a. Well, that community. wasn't really an outreach event. Yeah, no, that was a, a different event that we supported. Hurry. You know, what other outreach events did we have besides movie night? The tree lighting. Tree lighting. The tree lighting. That went well. You know, that's a traditional thing. You know. Uh -huh. uh, uh, it didn't go too well as far as collecting signatures. It did go as far as. Started Beautiful. something new again, so it was good, and people were there. Mm -hmm. And then well, I'll probably passed out about thirty pamphlets mm -hmm. that night. Yeah. So you know it was okay. We turned it into just passing out pamphlets helps. So hopefully we'll get somebody there. Uh, we had the street <coughs> fair. How was the street fair? That I didn't go to. That was well attended. We we I, I know we picked up about sixty something. Sixty signatures. signatures yeah, yeah, that was good. And then people are starting to participate from that. Now, how much money did that cost? Twenty five hundred dollars. That was twenty five hundred. And what? How we're going to evaluate this for the next meeting is we'll put the amount of money it costs divided by the amount of people we get. Right. So well, we while we're talking about the number of signatures, we got how many signatures did we get on movie night? About yeah. sixty. So right. sixty, and that cost. How much? Five hundred. Well, we had a free movie, but it, probably around eight hundred. But it's if about, you were to pay for it, yeah. So if you, yeah, so if you if you compare the two, yeah, the, the movie night is much better. Better yeah. than the other, yeah. but the other is much better in terms of Visual. community presence, direct community right. presence. I just you know, don't know whether twenty five hundred dollars is. Well, the truth the is, is, we could have had the booth for five hundred. Right. Yeah. We were you also know, sponsored. We could have had the booth for 500 and still achieve the same result. Right, relatively. But because it, it's a home event, the board decided that they wanted to give it extra support because it was its first year after a long time. And, you know, but again, they're going to have trouble next year because this last year they got an extra 25000 from CD12, did they not? To help uh, put on the event that they are not going to get repeat of. 50000 from the county. From the county, whatever it was, it was a large sum <laughs> that they're not going to have. This that they are year. not going to have next year. This year, this year, is it well, next this, year or this year? Coming yeah. this year, yeah. yeah. It's, I'm, all right, come on, it's still January. <laughs> and January. It's yeah. not the fifth. <laughs> so I, th I think when we come to evaluate these next month with dollar signs, maybe we can have an idea of you know, just because it's we get so many people per dollar, that's not everything, but it should be a factor in our outreach. Definitely. Story. Definitely. Oh, but I also want, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead Mike. I also want to point out that, uh, and I won't mention any names, but a couple of people who manned the booth at, at the street fair didn't really try to collect signatures. So right. we, need to, we need to work on that one too. Yeah, we had two people talking there for about an hour. That wasn't fun. All right. All right. All right. Let me just get to you first. What did you think were the best and the worst of outreach? I think uh, I definitely agree with uh, William. Uh, it seems to be for the money, uh, the Halloween thing, and uh, the uh, situation with uh, movie night. Okay. I remembered a, an event. I don't know. It involved some outreach that we had last year called an election. Mm-hmm. Did we get names or signatures from our outreach for the election? Well, I don't know, but I do know that Dunn has all a list that they sent us of all the people who participated in the election that actually signed. 
do we know because they did put their names down and Dunn has the information, do we know if all the names of the people who voted are names of people in our database? We haven't put them together. Okay, no. I, I, that yeah. might be a, 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 a metric measure or, or some data that might help us evaluate a metric for our, how much the election outreach yielded in terms of um, just election votes of yeah. new you know, email contacts. They filled out at the end of the election uh, comment sheet, or is, was there a sign? No, Dunn has a list. I got the list. Yeah. So we should add them. I think we've added them to our database, but so I haven't seen which one's already in our database. The good thing with that, that was the last time the Neighborhood Council sent out a newsletter. Unfortunately, it was sent out after the time period had expired for candidates to put in their application. Oh. For the nomination. For the nominations. Yeah. So we, we need to make sure that, it well, again, at some time. point, uh, the board's going to have to establish the ad hoc committee for the elections that are coming are up we, next year. Are we year. having another election? Next year. You need to start preparing yeah. for it this year okay. because you have to do the outreach. You have to, you know, and as a matter of fact, last night at Sun Valley, they took a straw vote on whether they wanted to consider internet voting. And I guess they were asked by Dunn to take this straw vote because they're the next one to have an election. And they wanted to see how they feel about it. And as the president said, he's like, they want to use us as guinea pigs. Well, but, the board, so. but the board decided it was a split vote, but unanimous towards not allowing internet voting. Mm -hmm. Well, but that's I think like that, absentee voting then. But again, that's down the road and outreach course we'll need to be involved with the ad hoc committee for the you know that part of what's coming up okay. but again maybe a, a way that we can somehow capture more in that process yeah I'll, I'll talk about later on but also website we could add that to our website uh, that's a whole new agenda item and the yeah. one I'm waiting for that's it that's it, the last one okay um, I think we should have absentee voting yeah but we not should. necessarily internet, maybe. No, by no, mail. No. It's an option by mail. By mail, by yeah. mail with the appropriate documentation, yeah. documentation, yes. Well, it is a good option. It'll be up to the board to decide. Well, what we need to have is a way that the people can go in well ahead of time online and register uh, their documentation. So that they can be So verified when they come to the election, they don't have to bring anything with them except their ID. Right. Kind of like a, you vote, you register to vote. It's mm -hmm. kind of the same process, create a registration to vote, so that in the future you don't have to go through the same thing if it's already been verified once. But that's for the ad hoc elections committees really to talk about. <laughs> Just uh, finishing up on this one. Are Cindy, there any, still there? Uh, Cindy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Still alive. Just checking. Okay. Um, are there any other outreach events we uh, that, that, we would, that we would like to have? Cindy. You can add to? Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Cindy. So, so obviously, you know, I talk about the small business, and also, um, there is, also, okay, we already talked about the street fair, uh, the small business workshop. And also, I think the one other one was a uh, was a rent control workshop. Okay. Oh, that's good, Cindy. Very good. All right, we'll talk about your uh, business plan a little bit later on down the line. Uh, did anybody have anything else they'd like to add as far as outreach plans or ideas? Well, I figured if she's going to do business, then we can do religious at the same time, uh, something for religious. Oh, we have a new uh, faith base. We faith do? Base. Yeah. Yeah, more, more should Oh, be. yeah, you weren't here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mark, Mark, right? Yeah, more That's so. good. But he hasn't been sworn in yet, right? No. No, but he was approved, okay. right? I don't think it was approved. I don't know. Oh, he was just announced. He was just announced as a candidate and approved at the next one. No, yes. So okay. I think it'll be approved at the next one. And one of the things we're going to do in outreach this year that I want to do is put some of the outreach responsibility on the heads of the committee people and also on the heads of those special representative groups. So because they, 
it, it seems like we're not getting information from them. We'll work together with them, but they should know who they represent. And, that, you know, the, like the faith-based person should at least have a list of churches that he and, and temples and other faith-based in the area. he could contact that are in the area. And I kind of expect that from everyone. The school person should have the school people. And I really want them to contact at least once or twice a year. That's a, at a minimum. They should be contacting at least every quarter. Um, Jim, by yeah. the way, there's one more thing that I don't know if you want to bring it up, and I'll leave it up to you. But um, I know one of the other neighborhood council actually used a, uh, they purchased a uh, phone system. So it actually calls everybody um, and leave a message on their voicemail. Um, you know, um, hey, if you come to the meeting tonight, this is what we're going to talk about. So I'd like one to maybe consider that, um, okay. use the same service for at the outreach effort. Just for, not for all the committee meetings, but just for the general meeting, so they don't get okay. bombarded with the phone calls, but just for a monthly general meeting. What does that run? Do you have a price on that, Cindy? Um, I don't. Okay. We'll yeah, but I think it's less than 50. I, I don't know how much it is. Oh, okay. I have two problems. Go ahead, Bill. Sorry, Cindy. I hope you can hear me. Um, I signed up to receive Porter Ranch messages. Um, although I didn't have to put my phone number in, I did, but I didn't ask for them to make the phone calls to me, and I get phone calls from them, and it really is annoying. You know, um, and, and I think that uh, enough stakeholders, you know, are technologically advanced enough, as long as the email no notifications are going out, they're, they're, they're going to see their notifications. Sometimes that phone, the voice box is full because all these young people don't answer voicemails. You have to text them to get their attention. The phone would have to be able to tell the difference to text a message. I, and and I have a real problem with asking public stakeholders for their telephone number uh, when they are not required to do so to get information. You know, if they volunteer it and they want it, I'd say great. If somebody who's blind wants, you know, can't read their internet, wants somebody to call them to know about a meeting, you know, well then we'll make a note on the file. Uh, but I, I I don't know how effective it is, and I know for me. The one instance where I'm getting them, it's a bother. Right. So, so obviously, so I think that has to do with, with well, I mean, our current, um, our current, um, you know, interest sign up sheet already asked for email and or phone number. And a lot of people don't give email, but they give a phone number. So I think, um, you know, perhaps if you do have a concern with whether you want phone calls to be made, then we can have a little uh, check box that says if you want to opt out of making phone calls or being called, then check the box. But most people, you know, they clearly say on there, you know, please give this email or phone number. And a lot of people prefer to give phone number. So we have a lot of phone numbers, but we have never reached out to them, you know? I would say one, uh, we, we did a Halloween event, and I would say half of them with phone numbers, no email. Oh, okay. So well, then, yeah, have, maybe there's some validity to that. that number, they're asking for us to contact them. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay, can you find out the cost of that, Cindy, by next meeting yeah. or by the board meeting? Okay, sounds good. I'll send out an email and I'll speak to you. Okay, thank you. Sure. You know, just to go backwards for a second, when we had the uh, neighborhood safety and preparedness fair event, uh, of course, we weren't allowed to get emails, and it all went through Mitch Englander's office, office canopy tent there. Do we know how many signatures? Any we, from there. No? No, we have to ask them. I didn't know. Because it was supposed to be divided up right. uh, by council, so that, that would be, um, I, I know it ran us about 500 bucks. Yeah. And something we should know about and look into. Okay. North had, had that understanding too, I believe. Right. right? Mm -hmm. That's the same understanding in Bill Hopkins that yeah. Granada North, North had. We'll contact them and see what we got. I, I haven't gotten anything yet from CD12 on that. But, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that was a good event. Now the thing there that was, and I attended that event, uh, um, we didn't have much 
literature or anything to really hand out much. And the literature that we have doesn't really seem to represent us properly, being that it's just basically copy the copy paper on the thing. And I thought that uh, maybe we should work on getting something a little bit more, you know, substantial, quality. yeah, quality-wise, so that people will actually read it, or maybe, you know. Did we have the trifolds back then? We we, we did, but we of did. course our trifold is as old as dirt. Yeah, and it's you know it's just green and stuff, and it doesn't really. No, we, we we need a marketing piece like we all know how to create yeah. for our businesses. Business. Yeah, something yeah. more attractive. Something you spend the extra money. It's it's worth getting noticed. Because I notice I, at every event we wind up explaining to them, you know, okay, this is what we're all about and stuff. I said, you can only do that for so much. I mean, here's a brochure on it, and if it's attractive enough, then hopefully they'll read it. Not that everybody will read it, but at least it looks professional and it looks, you know, presentable. Do you want to do a revamp of the trifold then? Yeah, mm -hmm. something like that. Okay. We also talked about taking the trifold and some other items out to uh, the taco trucks. Yeah, but nobody's and doing you know, it. Yeah. Yeah. No, but before we give them out, we need to, something prepared so that, you know, it's not embarrassing just to hand them out. Hey, it looks like a menu or a takeout menu is what it looks like more than, than anything else, you know? Okay, so why don't you do a revamp on that and get back to me and then we'll do that. The, the, I mean, the trifle is really good money-wise. It's, you know, cost maybe five cents each mm -hmm. and that's what we have to have. I have no idea how to go about doing that, to be quite honest with you, so far as getting a marketing piece or something together. It's not on the agenda yet, but I have some some good ideas, so we can just go ahead and you know, put that on yeah. another agenda right. so, we yeah. can, so we can do it. Discuss I'll, it. I, I'll, I'll work on a mock-up okay. because I've read a lot of different neighborhood council websites and how they describe what a neighborhood council does and some of them have some very nice concise concise uh, descriptions of the purpose of a neighborhood council and its relationship to the community so i'll i'll grab some pieces if we can get a couple of pieces for the different neighborhood councils and uh use them as you know Mm -hmm. Example. Okay. I whipped that one again. Well, really I'm only looking at getting the definition in terms of the rest of the piece. It's Granada Hill South okay. all the way. Right. right. You know? and, and it should be like a mini thing of our website. What we have yeah. on the website, we put it there as far as mission statements, goals, what we do. Again, the, the thought that would be in my head is not to do a trifold piece, but an 18 and a, an eight and a half by 14 folded. folded. Okay. And the reason being, as we all know, everybody gets the trifold in that shape. Everybody gets the the eight and a half by eleven folded in half this way. If we take that that eight and a half by fourteen and fold it the lengthwise, so it's really long, it's always going to stand out wherever it is. You know, and each you know each little thing is really easy to see. To me, so it's it's something. It's like, just an okay. idea, uh, of course, to use what we know to make something really stand out when you're going to pass it out. Okay. Yeah, kind of like when we have property flyers and stuff. You want something that will fit on a stand or something that is easy to distribute. And also the big postcards. Okay, out. so yeah, okay. we'll, we'll set that for next. It. Okay. next well, meeting. Also, but. let's throw in there. You know, you and I were very impressed. I forget which neighborhood council. Uh, it was directly across from us, mm -hmm. and they had that large map of the boundaries. Yeah, that was really good. People really. Uh, we have a boundary map somewhere, I think. <laughs> Don't we? We, need we should. I didn't we see need anything in that room. We need man. To break that There's nothing out. there. So oh, it could change soon too. Yeah, and then a, a banner with our name on it. We have a banner. Where is that? Oh. I just uh, just got it back. It was last year's at the street fair. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, moving on. Let's see. We oh, get we, that key to storage. I know we talked about yeah, it. Yeah, general yeah. meeting. That's Brad. All right. Let, let me get back down there. We we talked about committee guidelines in a couple of meetings before, and we had some ideas on on some things we do to make our committee better. Uh, I just want to hit on a couple right now. One thing is we should have like a committee book. 
okay, that has what we're doing. But we need a calendar. Yeah, we need, you mean like an outreach calendar? Yeah, so that we, even the committee knows what's coming up in advance and we don't wait for the last minute to try and publish, publicize yeah, it. And, but, uh, yeah, go ahead, Cindy. Uh, we've had before also that I've noticed this year because I'm new is things are popped on us with three weeks to go that makes it real hard for all of us so an outreach calendar is excellent and then we know ahead of time on what to do but it, it makes it a lot easier and we should actually not have new events popped up with um, yeah we, we have to have at least a month leeway on that because uh, I to I've do it properly it yeah Actually, maybe more than a month, month and a half. Yeah, probably. What was that event in the park that we, we missed entirely? I think it was on Receder or something. Oh, that neighborhood watch outreach or no, yeah, something. We like really lose that. Yeah, they had a booth. But they canceled it. They canceled it last minute. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and then they canceled. But there, there are things we should be on the lookout for, and we should have some, and we should also be able to have like a little booth three or four people and go out to a new event, you know, that's three or four hours, just boom, like that, and have a thing, have a little outreach packet ready. Okay. Do you want to make our outreach plan? We don't have anything in January, right? I think we're going to have to... I don't know. Let's whip out that calendar and look. <laughs> no, I don't think we have anything in January, and I think it's a little bit short to plan things in January now. Well, well, no, yeah, I'm looking for the whole year. I'm thinking for next meeting, let's actually have an outreach calendar with all our events. So what are the events you're going to have? We know, well, that, we that's know what of, I don't we, know. We know of two of them. We talked about them earlier. Yeah. You know, we don't have an election this year, so that's not an event that would happen early in the year. That'll take care of maybe early next year. Uh, we do have the, um, the movie night, and that was in August. Yeah. Right. So in August you got your movie night. In October you've got your Parks and Rec Halloween thing and mm -hmm. a bigger participation, maybe getting people to come and dress up as friendly costumes. You know, Elsa or Anna or Orloff or something like that. <laughs> you know that the kids would thoroughly enjoy and hand out your neighborhood council cards while at it, getting those sign ups. What other events do we have? I mean, well, we, I mean, we have about a this? lot of events. What do we, we want to have do in the then, chart? I guess you know. I just, I just want to say that we should have this outreach calendar. Maybe not this week. But well, next to make a calendar. You're going to have to have some events to put on the calendar. What do you want to do in March? Well, that's what I'm asking. I wasn't here last year, so I know. I, I, I have no. Last year, year, do you do you I don't know what they did, and nobody, none of us were here yeah. last year. Cindy, Cindy you and I are the only ones. What happened in the first? Okay, I can, I can speak to that. Okay. January, February, and March. Yeah, so as far as our reach, the only thing we did, the only outreach that I know of was the Granada Hill Street Fair, um, the Halloween event, and maybe Easter egg hunt, but we had a food. Oh, yeah, so Easter. All the outreach we did was in conjunction with the Park and Recreation. Yeah, we blew the Easter. And that was the only thing. So we didn't really do our own thing. Um, we did our own thing, and that's why I think, you know, I wanted you to do the workshops, which is more community based. Okay. When do you think you're ready to do that business workshop or the tenants workshop? This year for coming on, yeah, when is January, the first February, one? February, you want to do it? I would say, I would say uh, maybe one in March, maybe one in May or June. 
let's go for May because we got the Easter thing we'll be able to do in April, right? Okay, right, right, right. And it's going to so take some time. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, so May, is that going to be the business or the renters? I would say we do the business first, which is March, and then May will aim for the rent control thing. March? Oh, no, no, no. no you business in more. May. Business in May is as soon as And then the renters in another month. Yeah. Renters after sometime. Maybe the next month. Run them back to back. No? Jim says That's a lot of work. I mean, it's all the time. You want to do an event every month. Yeah, but you don't want to do the coordination. I mean, showing up, that's not a problem. Yeah, but you don't want to have a big event and nobody shows up. We have to do outreach to get all the addresses of the people, visit them, or at least send them a mailer so they know. But it's not working I, with the just sorry, online no, website. No, when I when I um, when I went to the one in Salt City, they had like thirty. It was a full house, thirty, forty. They had like thirty people, thirty or something. People showed up. So um, because also the entities that the speakers, they also invite people as well. Okay. Yeah. There's a big difference. How many people showed up totally at Studio City? How many sponsors and. How many uh, people they had, uh, they had, um, they had uh, five speakers, uh -huh. and uh, and then uh, I would say 30, 40 people. They didn't have anybody sponsor. I mean, they have some snacks. I think that they were chosen to be one, but that's about it. And they have five speakers. Um, you know, they're all, I mean, very credible people. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'll, I'll sign it up. I'll just reach out and maybe get some dates, and I'll email it out to. Later. All right, very good. Thank you, Cindy. On the sure. renters, on the renters farm, hopefully we can get Gina involved in that. Since she what represents, she's the rent. She's since she represents, represents the, the renters. renters. Right. And who represents business for our? Can I help? Is it Jerry? Is it Jerry? Is the business is representative? Yeah. All right, he should be in on that too. Yeah. Um, I did talk with the Chamber of Commerce briefly about that. They were all excited. They, they want to help on, in that. Uh, but it is going to reach all the businesses in Granada Hills. Chamber yeah. only has actually about 220. In Granada right. Hills, we probably have 1,200 businesses easy. Okay. Oh, oh, by the way, um, I did uh, speak with Home Depot about the, the truck, and they said uh, they're, they'd be more than happy to participate in the, this coming year. Uh, with a truck uh, for the Christmas parade. Holiday parade. Yeah, holiday, holiday parade. parade. <laughs> holiday parade. All right. So uh, we just have to give them notice. Okay, and, and that again will do real early. Um, uh, one thing we're going to go on to item D is uh, issue based outreach. Besides a general survey or something, I think it, it'd be good if we put a lot of our money in, in the issues, like if we do a cleanup. We contact all the people around there. If we do um, a movie night, we just don't rely on the parks and our email, but we also contact all, all the people around there because what we really need is HOA numbers of those areas around the parks so we don't have the problem we did with the cell phone antennas not being able to contact them. That, that was a hard one. But anyway, it's also a good way to focus your money is doing issue-based outreach. Yeah. So... But you know, I, I wanted to contact, as well as a matter of fact, I did contact all the schools for movie night uh -huh. um, and uh, emailed them our flyer to uh, Patrick, it. Patrick Henry, uh, both high schools, elementary schools, and I, I think it helped a little. But I also asked for the heads of the PTAs to PTSAs to you know, get in touch with us and perhaps we could post some of their events and they can post some of ours and have that communication going and not, not one of those people responded and I wouldn't mind going in there and talking to each of those people, but I need a business card. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, right? Yeah, I don't have mine either. Nobody so. has theirs on the new board. Uh, uh, and here we are, on. what, almost a year now? <laughs> well, I've, a I've asked if they wanted help, because I did the business cards for Granada Hills North. And they, uh -huh. they don't talk to me. 
Did you get your shirt yet? <laughs> I'd be shocked if I got anything. Okay. And, and if you look on the uh, website, I, I'm not on this committee. <laughs> That's, that comes under website update. We have to do a lot with that. That'll okay. be the last issue. Okay. But on the agenda. Okay. I, I have a comment for the issue after each. Uh, I was at Planning and Land Use Committee meeting. They talked about expanding the notice in given circumstances for like these cell towers that are going up and, and certain other right. um, issues. issues. I, think, I think the mural issue came up again. Um, but they, they, talk, they talk about doing this outreach for their issues and then they start to make excuses as why they don't or they want to just pass it to the outreach committee and I said you know what all you have to do is write up what the issue is pass it along to the outreach committee tell them you want them to mail to X number of people um, I will volunteer to get the free information for that you know extra 500 foot radius besides the minimum 500 that you want to send to end labels and then all the council has to do is put the labels on the envelope with, you know, your message to those folks and it can go. And I'm sure the outreach committee would be very happy to pay for sending those out because the cost, relative cost, is minimal for the outreach that's being provided through the service. Right. And so, um, like you know, I, I want you to know that, that the, the Planning and Land Use Committee is talking about doing some issue-based outreach and we'll be looking for your assistance with that. Um, we all know we can get these labels from the title companies right. and just say, hey, look, give me this radius. Well, you can get you it know. easier from Zemus. Is the easiest or Zemus, way. yeah. Really they, they even talked about it at yeah. the meeting, getting it out of Zemus. Yeah, so, but they've been doing a lot of talking for many months. And then, well, like on the cell phone issue that perturbed me was, they just gave it to us at the last minute. And, it, and it's really hard to do well, at the again, last minute. We, yeah. we need that information as soon as they get it. Uh, if they're planning to do any outreach. Well, uh, well, I mean, the idea is we're talking about the issue-based outreach. Right, right, and, not, right. and planning and land use is our number one source of issue-based outreach. In my conversations with um, our, our area commissioner, Lydia, who was like one of the people on Sunland to Hunga way back when, mm -hmm. she says most of their stakeholder participation <coughs> comes from their promotion and education of the public regarding Issues. issues. Tonight they are meeting because of the high speed light rail that's going straight through right. their neighborhood and, and you know beautiful equestrian areas. You know. I mean that's and they're they're they've got a church because they're expecting hundreds of people there. And we'll have hundreds of people there. And over the years they always talk about when they have their issues come up, their outreach from planning and land use is such that they always have stakeholders showing up. Right? Yeah. You know, the other thing is is issue based. Jim, yesterday Granada Hills North Neighborhood Council sent out an email blast that the Public Safety Committee was gonna be talking about the problems with the DMV up at Woodley and Havenhurst. Mm -hmm. You know, and I went up and I got lucky because God always gives me good parking spots. There wasn't much available. I was kind of curious because they didn't say what the problems were. But at that meeting, they had done an email blast and it caught my attention. So I went to the meeting and sure enough, three stakeholders showed up at a neighborhood council meeting, that meeting for the very first time attending a neighborhood council meeting because they got an email. Right. about an issue base they did an email blast they did you know they did that in the outreach you know well that's what it's supposed so, to that's what we're supposed to be doing but so when it comes up we time. have to send yeah. out the we you know right it, it it just works if we do it but we don't ever do it. we all that i ever hear about is talk about doing some of these things you know i, I can offer some assistance when i say i can offer to you know do a type up a brochure or offer to get labels for the area they want to send out to but um, you know the initiative you know I don't know maybe we have to hound them <laughs> well remember they haven't done this before in a long time so we do have to hound everybody <clears throat> if we want something done that's just the way but it anyway is. again issue-based outreach is that is what I consider the not only do I consider it the best way to get active stakeholders who want to be involved, 
it's also really fulfilling the purpose for which the neighborhood councils were established. Exactly. You know, is is this one thing right here? The Issue-based outreach. You know, it's, my idea is that's what it should all be about. It should never be be about beautification and or some of the things that go on. It should all be about this communication part. Everything else is inconsequential to the improvement of our community as a whole, in my opinion. Yeah, I just I, 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 got to make that clear. It's my opinion. Yeah, I also think we should. <laughs> That's your disclaimer. We yeah. should make that clear on the website too, because I don't think a lot of people really know what neighborhood councils are for. Well, well that's for, the whole yeah. thing. Yeah, so we have to make it clear. We'll get to that at the end. What the function yeah. is, or what okay. we could right. function as. So anyway, let's enough, go on to E. Uh, ad hoc tree lighting committee. I, we used to have an ad hoc tree lighting committee. Okay, From what I understand, the ad hoc committees dissolve after the new, sure. the new, no, the new people come in. Right. So I, I guess we have to form a new one, but that was very hard on me and a lot a few other people that worked on it because it was all last minute stuff. I want to get the old people from the committee. I don't know if any of you want to volunteer too, but we have a group of the people that did it for five years ago, with, you know, with the rotary well, we and were stuff. There. Yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'll let you know when the committee meetings are. Okay, mm -hmm. who they are. It's, it's everybody involved with the tree lighting. Most of them are rotary, but it's good we start so we don't have this. Then coming up, you know, three weeks, two weeks before we're ready to light the tree and have no money. The other thing we're thinking about doing on the tree lighting is try and ask other people to share in the expense, either or other organizations. So this is just our, our solo venture. The tree lighting's our solo thing. What do you mean? Um, they, they there's no now. participation the from anybody else. And, and now it's us. Now it's us because yeah. we have money to do it. So yeah. We pass the buck. But but Cindy, it's not are fair. You still here? Cindy, you there? Cindy, wake up. Okay, we don't know. Did okay, your phone okay. die? Anyway, no, it's still on. Okay. Anyway, so we inherited this from the... <laughs> no, the chamber used to have it. We Pretty took it much. over when they had no, Money. no things. Uh, and then uh, we were only supposed to take it over for a year or two and then go out back. It used to be the chambers. But what we wanted to do is split it with the whole community so we could use it as an outreach event too. Well, and I was so, thinking if we can get some of the business owners in the exactly. immediate area should be. Well, that's another reason we want to couple this to the business uh, yeah, forum group. that's there. You know, yeah. it costs 3500 bucks if, if everybody could- $3,500? Yeah. yeah. And that's for the power and- no, uh, that's just for the and, and lighting Including trade. trimming. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's a lot either. But it's a lot of expense for our organization to take on a loan. Either we want to give it to the city yeah. or the Rotary, or split it up with the whole community. The yeah. other things that I wanted to comment on, as far as I mean, and as the, far as the tree, tree lighting, tree lighting, okay. which is wonderful. Uh, a gentleman there said something about at the last general meeting about changing the lights. Yeah. Um, what would be the possibility, since we're going through this expense? Of, of, of making the tree look, when we trim it, look a little bit more like a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. and, the shape. And, Cindy, are you there? Shape it. All right, good. <laughs> it looks like a condom. <laughs> are, you guys, are you guys calling me? Yeah, we were wondering if you were there. Trimming the tree, well, we'll talk about that better okay. in the end. Making the lights committee. look like a, a, a tree. Yeah. Right. It's not easy, but if you're yeah. interested in that, we'll now the, have the committee. So the 3500 is not even for the light, the power of the lighting of the tree. That doesn't... No, that that actually included. the power for lighting of the tree is kind of minor, maybe 100 bucks. Yeah. But the hard part is going up 75 feet. And then trimming and, it and, as well. Well, the trimming isn't that big a deal, but just putting on the lights is. Mm. And also, we should look for other prices, but commercial ones cost about ten thousand to do that. I mean, it would look nice, but it's a big difference in price. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got a really big ladder at the house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. Uh, Granada Hills Neighborhood Council survey. We want to be doing a survey early in this year. Okay, so we want to start prepping it up as far as seeing what costs are, how we're going to do it. 
I don't know if you wanted to do one big survey all at once, or we could, it's sometimes easier to handle if you do just by portions. You know, the first quarter do some of it, second quarter do that, and concentrate on the neighborhood. And also divide up the neighborhoods. So, don't, don't, are you talking about like a survey page? Don't yeah. we need to put one together first? Yeah. Oh, okay. but I mean, we, we're not doing anything. We haven't, we haven't really even talked about this this whole yeah. year, but it's something we should do at least once a year. Because I know Renee and I went to uh, the North's yeah. meeting to do a survey. And we, we, yeah. Um, we actually have one. We don't, we don't have one, I don't think. No. Oh, we have old ones. Yeah, we, we have do. tons of old ones. But I'm thinking. Next meeting, we review and see if this is just general when we want to have it out, how we want to do it, how we want to distribute it. Well, what are we trying to accomplish with the survey? Are we trying to find out how, uh, if uh, the community, uh, what the community needs from us, or what's the survey trying to? Well, I think if I remember correctly, it started out with, do you even know who we are? Right. What the neighborhood council is. And then we uh, broke down various issues that affect the community at the moment, asked if they were aware of that, and then towards the end, uh, we talked about, would you like to be part of this and volunteer, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not just a survey at the same time, uh, basically outreach, basic outreach at the same time. Right, it's it's do the a, same yeah. thing and ask them what they think should be improved in the area. Okay. Actually, actually, it should be, in principle, it should be from the surveys, we do our... Uh, uh, outreach planning. Not, not only outreach planning, but we do planning for the neighborhood council. It should be the surveys that have a big deal in directing the way the neighborhood councils should go. Without the surveys, you got a little group of people directing the whole neighborhood. Saying that they represent these people right, and they don't right. even really... I mean, they may not, you know, they not, may not really have the backing. I, I think one of the most important uh, questions on that survey was what issues are important to you so that they can give us some Participate. input. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so for next time, let's work a little bit on, on the survey, have some questions, and I think it also might be good if we put on the website what the stakeholders would like to have as a question, you know, so so we get some input, not just, you know, what's, way. what's good for my house, you know, it, it, we have to, because feedback, if you, yeah, if you get people involved in asking the questions, then they feel like more like they're involved in steering the neighborhood council or guiding it, and then they'll, then they'll participate, more likely to participate, if it's just a group of people doing what they want, then they don't, and that should go on that, right. Go ahead. Um, I was just going to suggest, wouldn't the survey make a, a great event for March, kicking off the survey? And that's something that we don't have to really do outside planning for because it's, we just mean, get, right, right. We get some to ideas together, <laughs> put it on the agenda for next month. And right. It make goes out in March. We don't want it to go out too far in the end of the year. We need guidance now, you know, what do you like better? So. March, the, the first part of the year is kind of like easy on events. Well, you'd have to have so, a, a, you know, you'd have to have the, a draft of the survey ready to be revised and approved yeah. at, the, at the next February meeting. February meeting. Right. But actually, preferably, you'd really want to do it before the February meeting so you can get any board approvals for anything that, if necessary, at the March first meeting. You mean do it now? No, it's too much to do now. A survey, well, a survey takes a whole okay, so thing. Okay, so I just, just think March event. Well, then no, no, no. But, but, but let's do it for put it on the agenda for February, and I'll send out some old neighborhood council. Okay. But, I'm, yeah. but I'm, what I'm trying to get us is, you know, we're talking about our calendar. I'm just trying to help you to put an event on the calendar for a month, and, and kicking off of a survey could be a good event to put on the. Oh calendar. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know? exactly. So if you pick a month that you want that survey to go out, like if it's going to be March, March, I don't necessarily think the board, I don't know if the board has to approve the survey or not. Or I think know, they not, should. They probably should. And, and have input. Yeah, yeah. Maybe the public will think of some good questions that could be put on that survey. Well, I, would, I would think it, it used to be our best 
Questions came from the public. Okay. You know, it's, you know. That's, that's a good so, idea. Then. All right, uh, so we'll, for... We'll have, we'll have work on putting ideas together and questions we think should be on the survey and, and put all those questions together next month and make the survey. And, and the question should probably go on that um, neighborhood web thing as well. Oh, and yeah. I, you know, a, a block to go on and take the neighborhood survey, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah, online survey. You that that uh -huh. the online version. In fact, we might even cook up a, a way some people do it. They do like a beta online, and then they do the big survey to everybody. You know, so you get an idea of what people are answering, which questions are work, which don't. Okay. So okay. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, and then refine it. In other words, use our, our email database for the first round. Right. Get their feedback. And then uh -huh. use their feedback to, to send uh, out generate a, to the, massage the, the survey, survey to send it out on mass for the annual for you know yeah. to satisfy that annual mailing requirement. Which exactly, would be the best yeah. use of it. Because the stakeholders don't really see it like the board sees it. You know, there's mm -hmm. two different. You know, they may have two different totally right. views. Yeah. No, that's yeah. Nah, you got to be kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else about the survey or ideas to add? No. Yeah. Okay, we have to do the costs on that. I'll see what I can do of the costs. You guys look into the costs too, okay? I think we should only do it once because doing it several times I think might be more difficult to get off the ground compared to just one. Yeah, it's just one. I need help with the input. Who, who do we go through for printing? There's like two or three people you can go through. Granada Hills, no, Old Granada Hills Residence Group has a real good uh, price at Office Depot. Otherwise, we have things to the neighborhood council we could go to. We have postal posts. We have the printers. We just have to compare them. Because uh, Eric was saying something that Postal Plus wasn't cooperating with, with him. him. They cooperated good with me. Oh, because I was going to say right across the way, I, I think it's called Minuteman Press or something. Carter's. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I talked to them, and they said that they would extend us the credit every month. Just go in there and print okay. something And up. I said I'd bring a business card by, and they never did. Okay. What's that say? <laughs> say it. No, because it's in oh, okay. okay, 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 proper okay, to say. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, but I mean, what we will do is we'll compare about three or four printers. If you guys have printers, we'll ask Cindy too or whoever else, and we'll compare all prices because that's what we should be doing. Uh, the other thing is a short newsletter with the survey, you know, that tells what we do, like a one-page thing. But um, some people do newsletters, and that's not what people really want. Newsletters is what the neighborhood council does, supposedly does for you. People really want to have their input. If they have their input, they're most likely to participate. So a short newsletter and the survey is good. Bill? Um, since I'm going to be working on that brochure, that brochure will also be pretty much an, an outline or a template or a format that it will also be used with a newsletter. Right. So um, in, that, in that process, I will attempt to put both together for you. The survey and the, the newsletter? Survey. No, 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 the brochure mm -hmm. and the newsletter, I don't. The survey is a joint effort next month. Okay. We're talking about... Um, the brochure and the newsletter. The survey will need input from everybody. Well, you, you talked about adding a, a newsletter t to the survey when it goes out. Right. Mm -hmm. So basically that Cindy, were you going to say something? She sneezed. Yeah, how do you know? Whenever I want to say something, you can't hear my background. Mm -hmm. No, I was going to say, there's a company called Print Runner, they sent the nice, and we print things really cheap. Okay, send me that address, and we'll compare them with the others, okay? Okay. All right. Um, but back to, you know, a, a, a newsletter. Let's, you might be able just to pick up something out of this, this brochure that I'll, that I'll, uh, make a mock-up of. Yeah, but also on the brochure, I want the committee heads and stuff to add a little something on there. Well, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Okay. But, uh, you know, again, I can, 
if I put it into a mock format, they're going to know the kind of things that we want them to submit to that. Okay, you know, like when planning and that. land use is going to be talking about the the the, the height variation that Verizon's trying to get when they're putting that new antenna on top of their building at the corner of Encino and Chatsworth, you know, that that's the kind of stuff that we want you to put in there and that you're going to be discussing it at your February da 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 da, da planning and land use meeting. The public is invited to come and give their input on this issue. Okay. You know, we know in our business, again, we have to get their attention, we have to give them a benefit, and we have to put out a call to action. You know, it's it's all the same thing. You know, so when we when when I'm putting this together, I'm going to try and put it together with that in mind. You know, because unless we ask our stakeholders to sign an email list, unless we ask our email our stakeholders to come and help us pass out brochures at the the street fair, how do they know whether they can say yes or no? Right. <laughs> right. no put them no. on the spot. <laughs> Okay. So that would be my idea for, for that issue. Okay. You. I'll, I talk too long. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I get it. There's nothing <laughs> else on the survey. <laughs> really, um, we'll go on to outreach items. What kind of outreach items do you think should be replenished? And we'll do the cost. I'll look at the cost. And we'll We're talking about the brochure one. Okay. Brochure is cheap. That's a. Uh, and not if we're doing it nice. Yeah. Uh, I mean, compared to a bag. Oh. You know, okay. You know, fifty cents compared to four dollars. Yes, yes, I got you. Okay. okay. Brochure. What else? Do you pens. Would, pens. 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 Definitely pens. Yes. And the bags. The bags were the main yeah. thing that they That's really what they wanted. They came over for. Yeah. And bags. So. The bags. Okay. Uh, what? We have to do price costs on this, but the bags are still fairly okay. What, what else? Bill? You know, it was an, it's an off topic. I'll wait till later. Okay. We um we still have balloons. Yes, we have tons of balloons. We still have balloons. Tons of balloons. We don't need them. Helium yeah. we need. What about those little <laughs> badges? It says Granada Hills. Yeah, oh, something like that. Like business cards. FYI. Business cards. Right. I have a large helium tank that I use when I'm doing my balloons for my open houses. So if you have an event where you have to fill your balloons, I have the helium tank. It, all the neighborhood council has to do is pay for filling it up right down there at the tavern on Parthenia, down there by the skating rink. Near the... You know, and uh, then you'll have your full tank and... Near the vet. How, you know, how expensive is it to fill? Um, about $60. Yeah. But the wonderful thing about the tank. wonderful thing about a Granada Hills South balloon filled with helium is you have just made every child that comes oh, yeah. by the happiest child in the world oh, if yeah. you can give them one. Yeah, we should have had it at the street fair. Yeah, I mean, we big street, had it at the street fair, fair would have been, yeah. you know. That, that's a time. big one. It worked well at the Halloween place. Yeah. Oh, there were balloons all what, over. What about the members who already have hot air? Mm -hmm. <laughs> It doesn't float the same. <laughs> Neither does it smell the same. <laughs> are there any other outreach items you guys think are really good? Or that um, I, 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 Jerry, and I asked him to check into it, the planning and land use committee handed out a couple of things, two-page things, that he had a stapler that doesn't use staples. It takes and puts an impression and slips a, a loop of the piece of paper under a little paper tab that it cuts in. And just right here, a little, you know, maybe half inch long cut out in your paper is what it looks like when it's done, but you don't need a staple. Oh, I good. thought that was like so green, like, wow. Mm. Wow, yeah. that's a great idea. I've never seen that. I never and, saw it and, either. And things like that, if, if they're cheap enough, we could get them and they're really good because people show their friends and it has our little logo. He on. says he had it because it was a giveaway he got from somewhere. Okay. So, yeah, I just, it, to, I don't get excited over too many of the giveaways. <laughs> but when, when, he, when, it's Jerry, what, 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 I was very excited. If you see any other items like that that are really hot, we'll, we'll look them up. I'm, I'm trying to think, uh, again, across from us at, at the safe, safety uh, event, um, they had tons of stuff. Do you remember any? Um, I mean, it was impressive. They had a lot of stuff. The only thing I remember were the, you know, people were looking for pens and the bags. That was it. Yeah. 
and then maybe it depends at work. maybe fun. maybe pads. Yeah. What do you think no, of pads? No pads. No pads. Yeah. yeah. Always good. What? If, uh, right. Because, uh, yeah, there is a you know book line. You press a button and it kind of comes up. I've gone there before with the logo printed on it. 